Hey everyone, I just put together this Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus and I put um, an LCD screen on it so that it would print off the IP address like I've done to my other ones. That camera should come back and focus here pretty soon. I intend on getting a Raspberry Pi Model 4 and I intend on giving away both of these Raspberry Pis. Um, there's one thing though. I will give away the Raspberry Pi Model 3 once I get up to 333 subscribers. And after that, once I get to 444 subscribers, then I'll do another giveaway for the Raspberry Pi Model 4. And for this Model 3 here, I put the LCD screen on it already. I put on the code that would print off the IP address. And also I put in some code that, would, um, that I'll be talking about in this video today where I can connect to devices and run commands on those devices and get the output back and have it printed in the terminal. What's the point of all of that? If you watch any of the people out there, if you follow Network Chuck, if you follow David Bomble, if you follow a lot of these other folks, they talk about the importance of learning DevOps, they talk about the importance of learning Python, Linux, all these different things. Also, with, with Cisco's uh, changes that are coming in February for their certifications, they're going to have some programming uh, course or programming certifications that you can get. So I think that the Raspberry Pi is a great resource for learning all these different things. And I know that there's people out there that want them. They just, um, for one reason or another, aren't able to, or um, they're just waiting for a different time to go ahead and get it. And I'd like to be able to provide that for people. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the code that I put on here for connecting to devices and running commands. Not only did I set up the Raspberry Pi to have the, LS the LCD screen on it and also have some scripts to get the IP addresses and other stuff, I also installed this Genie IDE on it. I installed Remote Desktop on it, so I'm actually RDP'd into the Raspberry Pi right now. And I um, put this script here. Let me see, I'm going to actually I'm already in test script, so we can do PWD. We can see which directory I'm in. We can do LL. By default, Raspberry Pis don't have LL enabled. You can only do LS. I enabled LL and LA. And then I also um, set it up to do Python 3 by default, whereas Raspberry Pis really do 2.7 by default. I used an alias command to get it doing uh, 3.7. All right, so we'll exit here. And before I actually talk about the script, I'm going to do a quick run through on um, letting you folks see what it does. So you put in Python and then the name of the script and it's going to ask for an IP address of the device. So I'll put in 192.168.7. And then I'll put in a fake one and we'll see what it does. So it's actually going to do user input validation to see if the IP address is valid. And I'll talk more about that when I actually bring the script up. So I'll do 192.168.7.100. And you can see that it went on to actually try to ping the device because the validation of the IP address worked. It was a valid IP. And then it went on to ping the device to make sure that it's actually accessible. What's the point of going on further with the script if the device isn't replying to pings? And it asked me what the username is. It asked me for the password. One thing that I wanted to note here, where it says, what is the username? And I type it in, it shows it. However, when I type in the password, it does not show that. That's also another thing I'll talk about in the code. So now it asks me what type of device is this? And I have, um, I have it set up to look for different prompts. So for CUCM, it's going to look for admin. And for the Raspberry Pi, it'll look for something else. For Cisco IOS, it'll look for a, an Octothorpe or a pound sign or hash, whatever you want to call it. Um, so what type of device is this? I'll say CUCM and it searched for the admin prompt and it found it, which means that if the admin prompt is there, then the device on the far end is waiting to receive a command. So I'll type in show status and it's letting me know that it's gathering the output right now. And here we can see the output from show status. Then it's asking me, um, do you want to run another command. So I'll say, yes, I do want to run another command. 
I'll say show myself. And um, again, it will ask me if I want to run another command and you, you can if you want to, I'll say no. Now the script is, is really nothing all that special. It doesn't do anything really all too cool. Um, however, I thought it would be a script that network engineers would like, right? Because they want to learn how to log into a device. They want to learn how to send commands to the device. They want to learn how to receive those commands and, you know, do something with them. Um, so now that I showed what the script does, I'll transition into actually opening up the script and we'll talk a little bit about it. So at the top of the script, I do my imports. I import Paramico to allow me to actually SSH into two devices. I import time to allow myself to sleep the script, put, put like a pause on it. And that allows the uh, remote device some time to actually do what it needs to do and then return the, the output. I use get pass to actually hide the, the password when it's being typed in. And I use um, IPI in order to validate the format of the IP address. OS and, and sys are used for things like um, sending or sending commands to the terminal if I need to, such as pinging. And I have re, which is the regex package for me to be able to go in and do some regex stuff, um, which is something I'm doing against Paramico because with Paramico, you have to tell it to read the buffer and you have to tell it how many bytes to read in the buffer. But if let's say if there's only 500 bytes in the buffer, if you tell it to read a thousand, it won't give you the buffer back right away. It will um, wait until it, mat it gets up to a thousand bytes. If I remember correctly, that's the way it seemed at least from my trial and error of messing around with it. So what I did was I found out how to actually determine how many bytes are in the buffer and I used a regex, um, some regex stuff to go about finding that. So that way I can feed the, the right amount of bytes into the read command. So if there's a thousand bytes in the buffer, I have a function that actually goes and identifies that, Hey, there's a thousand bytes in the buffer. So for your read command, you know, send a request for five, for a thousand bytes. All right. So again, the script is nothing all that special. Whoever's out there that wants to look at it, you could probably find some bugs in it. You could definitely enhance the code, I'm sure. Um, but here is where I'm doing a little function with some uh, if and elif and else statements that's looking to um, basically say, if it's CUCM, the admin prompt that we're looking for is this. If it's a Raspberry Pi, the admin prompt that we're looking for is this, et cetera, et cetera. Here's... Um, a function that is really nothing all too special. It's just going and getting, you know, asking for user input about what device is this. Um, here's where I print out that I'm waiting for the admin prompt. And then I go into a for loop and start reading, um, you know, how much I start reading and looking for the admin prompt. And then if the admin prompt is found, then I'll print out, Hey, the admin prompt was received and I'll do a break. Right. So, so far what we've looked at here is that there's different Python libraries that you can import. Basically these are, you know, um, compartmentalized packaged up codes. In fact, they're called packages as well. This is, this is, um, you know, wrapped up and put a bow on it type of code that you can go in and you can import that code and make use of what other people have done rather than writing a whole lot of code for your own, uh, on your own and, and just trying to, you know, smash your head against the wall going through this, you can basically leverage what the community has put out there for us. So that's one thing we talked about. We talked about, um, functions, which are just block of codes. We talked about, um, some control things, which are if and, and L if and else. And again, um, before I go too far, if you're not understanding any of this, if you don't, if you've never done any Python or, or coding or anything like that, there is a Python course on um, Solo Learn, which is free, and I thought it was really good. It's actually one of the courses that I went through when I was first learning any Python. Um, 
So now it, we there's a couple things introduced here that weren't talked about yet. This one here is while true. I'm basically just starting a what's called a while loop, and I'm going to go through this loop until a condition is met. And once that condition is met, I'm going to break out of that loop and then go on and execute uh, whatever the next section of code is. All right. Um, this is where I'm doing. I'm, I'm basically hard coding this to five seconds. I'm making this variable and saying it's five seconds. So I'm saying here, hey, I want to uh, sleep for five seconds. I'm printing that to the terminal and then I'm actually doing it. So why did I hard code this up here? That's because I want to make, be able to change this in only one spot and then it will actually take effect in these two different spots rather than having to make the change in two spots. That's one of the things that um, you should try to do in code is set it up to actually uh, be where you only need to make one change in one spot and have that change take effect in um, other areas if you can do that, if it's applicable. So um, here I'm also asking what the command is. Again, these are some functions. Some of these functions are just uh, very, very short and not much to it. I probably didn't need to make it a function, but whatever. And so here is where I'm actually doing the regex stuff and seeing um, what is in the buffer. So this is a function where I pass a parameter to it and then it will go through that parameter and find out um, how many bytes there are and then it will return that value. So whenever I call this function, I can return a value and have that be assigned to a variable. Um, here's where I'm getting the output and I'm doing a while true here and Let me see. I probably should have commented this code some more. So while true is this if prompt. Okay. So basically I'm, I'm going through and taking a look to see if the prompt is being returned. And if it is, then I'm, um, formatting the, the information that was returned from the remote device. And then I'm printing it out and then I'm breaking out of this loop. This is the part from earlier. This is this is actually some code that is um, executed earlier on. This is where I'm validating the IP address and I'm um, asking, hey, what is the IP address? And when they type it in, that is going to get stored in this variable. And then I'm doing a another while loop and I'm going to try to um, check to see if it's a valid IP address. And if it is, then I break out of this while loop and, you know, exit the function. Um, and I'll return the IP address um, for code to be used later on down the road. If I get an exception, then I'm going to ask again, I'm going to say, Hey, that doesn't look like a valid IP address. Um, let's try that again. And so down here is where I check to see if I can ping. And if it can ping, I'll return true. If it can't, then I'll print to the terminal here and um, ask like, hey, the script's gonna terminate, run the script again, but this time use a different IP address. I could have handled that a lot better, but um, I kind of just wanted to do something that was quick and easy and wasn't gonna take up too much of my time. So here's where it gets into um, what to do after, it, after a command is run. It's going to ask you, do you want to run um, another command or not? And if you do, then it, it executes some of those functions from earlier. And then if you don't want to, it's going to close the connection and it's going to print out that the connection was closed and that it's terminating the script now. Um, if, if the conditions aren't met, right? So if, if they give an input and it doesn't match yes or it doesn't match no, then I'm just going to continue. I'm going to run it again and it's going to print out again. Would you like to run another command? Yes or no. Um, so down here is where the script, the uh, script is actually going to start running. There's still a couple more things here. This is where I initialize the SSH client. Um, I'm basically setting the keys to auto accept and you know, some good stuff there. But down here is where a lot of the functions are actually being called. And, um, 
you know, that's, that's about it. It's not too fancy of a script, but I'll keep it on the, the Raspberry Pi. So whoever gets the Raspberry Pi can actually go in here and mess around with the script a little bit. And I might also include the script on a, Git, a GitHub repository that I'll share for other people as well. And if, if you want to see some more videos like this in the future, some more Linux, some more Python, um, some more collaboration stuff, which is what my channel does a lot of, then please go ahead and uh, subscribe below and keep an eye out for the future videos. Thank you.